Bottom line, I think this is a well put together package with well matched components and I'm actually impressed with it. For the full review, stick around. Hello everybody, I'm David. Welcome to my channel where I like to do DIY projects that are renewable energy and energy efficiency. In this video, I'm reviewing this Blue Eddy 240 from Max Oak. It has a 2.4 kilowatt hour battery. It's a rather a heavy unit, uh, but easy enough to pick up if you're just doing something like car camping or driving up to the weekend cabin, or maybe even hashtag van life. I think those are some of the applications this is well suited for. I've been testing this unit for the last three months and I am really impressed with it. I'm gonna be showing you all the test rigs that I had it hooked up to in this video, including a capacity test. But one of my favorite test rigs was hooking it up to the chest freezer turned refrigerator. I had it hooked up with one solar panel connected to the fridge for over a month straight. I never touched it, never moved it, and it just kept on going, kept powering the chest freezer, never let me down. Uh, so here's the little temperature sensor. This mechanical thermostat is just turned all the way up and then the temperature sensor runs down the side to this controller. So let's go ahead and plug this in and see if it works. So first thing we'll do is turn this on. All right, so the AC port should be on and 110 volts. So let's go ahead and plug this in. All right, so you heard the relay click first, and that was the relay for this, and then the compressor kicked on, and then the fan of the portable power station kicked on. We're at 0.94 for the power factor, so a little over 200 watts. It's the next day. This has been set up here with the solar panel and the little power station for the last 25 hours. So let's check. So 637 watt hours. See, there we go. Still keeping the drinks cold. It's been exactly 48 hours powering this chest freezer turned refrigerator using the solar panel and this little portable power station from Blue Eddy. And it looks like we're just over a kilowatt hour at 1.037 kilowatt hours. And it has not shut off. It's been running both nights. It's been set up like this. The first day I did move the solar panel in the afternoon to catch some afternoon sunlight and then realized the next day that I didn't need to do that. There was still plenty of battery life. So yesterday I just left it set up like this. It's been working really well. So this is actually really great. The battery could last three and a half days with no sun. The solar panel can recharge the battery in one day. It keeps that powered. I mean, I, I think this is actually pretty viable if your loads are really small, like just having a, a single fridge or freezer or a few lights, and you don't want to go through the hassle of building your own system, you really could just buy this. On the front of the unit is a barrel plug for the DC input. This is the same input you would use if this was plugged into a wall charger, which comes with it, or the leads with the MC4 connectors plugged into solar panels. They both go into this same one. Now the MPPT charge controller built into this unit can take up to 500 watts of solar panels. I think that's well suited because it means that in one day of sunshine you can fully charge the battery from dead to 100%. I'm actually impressed with how they match the components, being the inverter, the MPP solar charge controller, and the battery pack. You also have a couple of USB ports and the adapter port, which I traditionally have called the cigarette lighter uh, for, in cars, but is now the accessory port, right? On the back of the unit is a fan and two AC outlets. Now the total inverter on this is 1000 watts, so you're still not going to be able to power big heavy duty things like tools, uh, but you can charge your portable power tools off of this. There's one. There's two. The pool has two pumps on it, one to pump water to the solar thermal and one to pump water through the filter. Both pumps are now plugged into the back side of this Blue Eddy. Now I'm going to turn it on. So 115 watts for both pumps running and you can see we're about half 50% or so on the bars. <laughs> now I'm plugging in the solar panel. These are with MC4 connections. There we go. 
and we'll plug this in. Oh, a fan kicked on. That we have 238 watts going in and 113 watts coming out. So we are both charging and discharging at the same time. So I am impressed with it. I was really worried that at some point it might overheat because we had several days over 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it was out there in the hot sun, uh, but it just kept on going. It didn't overload, it didn't shut itself down. Today I wanna to hook up a solar panel to this and measure how many watt hours go in with the solar to recharge the battery to try to find out how efficient the MPPT is. Yesterday I had this dead and it turned itself off. I just plugged in a light uh, into the back of the unit there and we will double check that it's empty. It looked, I left this out in the sun the other day and the screen got a little faded in that corner. That was my bad. Don't leave these screens out in the sun. Oh, there it goes, it just, uh, that's the error code. So it's completely dead at this point. So I have a DC meter with a shunt here and I need to put this in line with the solar panel. Now these are MC4 connectors, they go to the solar panel and then the other end of this cable right here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these wires right here. On the negative side and on the positive side I have to tap in for a wire. Uh, that way we can measure how many amps flow through there and get an accurate reading of the watt hours that go into the Blue Eddy today with the solar panel to recharge it. This actually says positive on the plug right there, but that plugs into the negative side of the solar panel. So it's actually the negative part and that's why I put the ring terminals on here. I have the negative side hooked up through the shunt. On the positive side, I did not cut the wire, I just soldered the positive wire directly to it. That way the meter can read voltage. And now I'll put a little tape over this, and I've got this big piece of heat shrink, so let's just slip this, and there we go. Big piece of heat shrink over the shunt, and we are ready to rock and roll. Let's take this outside and set it up in the sun. Here's the test rig. This is a 365 watt panel. It's just leaning up on some lawn chairs right now. Under here is the Blue Eddy. Everything is off. It's completely dead. And here's the meter and I zeroed everything out. So you can see zero watt hours, uh, zero amp hours, and zero time. So this is ready to go. Right now it's showing 47.2 volts. That's open circuit because we're not plugged in yet. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Now as I plug this in, I'll keep the camera on the meter so we can watch what happens to those volts. Oh, and I just heard the fan kick on for the Blue Eddy. As you can see, it's dropping the volts down. It's looking for that maximum power point. So as it drops the volts, the amps are increasing, and when the computer sees it go the other way and total watts go down, then it knows it's found its point. Now different MPPT chargers can do this faster than others, and it says we're charging it at 173 watts, and on this meter it says 165 watts. Okay, it's the end of the day, and we are done charging the portable power station. Now this is the 240, so it's supposed to have a 2.4 kilowatt hour battery pack in it. And the solar panel is currently facing southwest. I've been moving it throughout the day. This says zero on it, so it's not taking in anything else from the solar panels, so it must be full. And this says 2.35 kilowatt hours over the last eight hours of runtime. So that's awesome. So we're all done here. Take that and it automatically turns off. I never actually turned it on because I wasn't powering anything. I just wanted to charge the battery. So now we'll take this inside the garage and do some more testing with it. And now that the unit is cool, it's the next day, we're going to run the capacity test on it. So I'll be running the capacity test using a variety of different heaters and we'll plug them into the AC ports on the back side. In order to measure that, I'll be using one of these little uh, watt meters. Now because this is a 2.4 kilowatt hour battery and we like to test batteries over the course of a five hour discharge, I'm going to be looking for about a 480 watt load on the battery. 
Now the inverter is built in, so I can't actually measure it at the battery source. That's, that's why we're gonna be measuring it at the AC side. Because we'll have some inverter losses, I will be looking for something around 450 watts as I start plugging in loads. I've gotta hold it down for three seconds. On the back side of this is where we have our fan and the AC output. So we'll just plug this guy in. So we got 110 volts. 60 hertz. There we go, kilowatt hours. All right, so the kilowatt hours is zeroed out and up here we're at zero watts. So we're gonna be looking for about 450 watts. The important thing we'll be measuring the kilowatt hours on the bottom. So we've got that space heater on low and in the front here it says 661 watts. And on the back it says 659, 660. So those two meters are actually reading about the same amount, but this is a little bit higher than we want. This would discharge us a little bit faster than the five hour rate. So let's see if we can get this dialed in a little bit better. We have two little space heaters plugged in, about 513 watts, and our watt hours are now going up. I'm happy with 514 watts. It's a little bit higher than I wanted, but it's close enough for a garage test. So we'll let this run and I will catch back with everybody when we're done with the test and we'll see how many kilowatt hours we use. Well the test is over, the batteries must have died because this unit turned itself off. And I captured it with this camera so I'll have to go in and check what that footage is. Here are some of the numbers I was able to calculate. Now the manual said that the inverter is going to be 88% efficient or better, and it said that the MPPT charge controller could be up to 99% efficient, but I wanted to test that. Now I had to infer a couple of numbers uh, through calculation. They probably programmed the BMS to allow us to use 90% of that, which is very common to leave that last 10% in the battery, which will uh, keep you from just killing the battery super quick. All right, next I'm going to try running my window air conditioner. It is a 5000 BTU window AC, draws a little bit more than 400 watts when running, but the surge on compressors can often overload these types of inverters. So I have the window AC plugged in through this 25 foot extension cord. It's up there in the wall. <laughs> so let's go ahead and turn this unit on. I'm gonna turn on that window AC. I, hear, I heard it click on and it's running. Now it's just running the fan right now. So let's uh, go ahead and check the front here. Right now it's running 67 watts on the front display. The compressor hasn't kicked on yet. So when that compressor kicks on, we're gonna see if it overloads and trips this inverter. Oh, darn. Oh. Couldn't quite make it. It just turned the fan on again. So the unit automatically reset after it overloaded. And it overloaded again. All right. I'll go ahead and turn this off. All right, well, we've got the oscilloscope up and it's plugged into the back of the unit here with these probes. Now I do have the probe set to 10 times. So it says 10 times on the probe, so I think that's correct. But if we stop this sine wave and please let me know in the comments below if you think this qualifies as a pure sine wave or not. Thank you everybody very much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, comment, share, and you can check out the link in the description below if you'd like to check these out on Amazon.